What is a blockchain? Oh, that's easy. It's a digital ledger that lives in an imaginary place. Well, let's make it simple. NFTs are changing the world, and change can feel complicated and scary. But listen, you don't need a computer science degree. You don't need to learn how to code. You just need practical skills to win. If you are here, you are in the 1% of humans that are preparing for this major cultural shift. We're going to keep it fun. We're going to keep it light. We're going to make it practical. Welcome to NFTs Made Simple. Just a reminder, we are not financial advisors. This is not financial advice, and you should do your own research. Hey, let's get into it. So a core concept of understanding what NFTs are is the blockchain. So let me read you out here, Dragon, what a blockchain actually is, because I think this is really important. At its most basic, a blockchain is a list of transactions that anyone can view and verify. The Bitcoin blockchain, as an example, contains a record of every time someone sent or received Bitcoin. So basically, this is a fully transparent, fully public digital ledger, okay? And I'm getting this from coinbase.com. We'll have links to all the references down below. So Dragon, let's break this down. A blockchain is a list of transactions that anyone can view and verify. Let's break this down. Yeah, I mean, full transparency, when I first heard of this, like the first thought in my head was like, like some sort of like DNA helix structure. I was, <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh man, this is this is a nightmare. Because you know, it, it, I remember when I was when I wanted to get involved in all this stuff. I was all I, I I embraced the idea of getting involved in cryptocurrency and NFTs. But then I found out about like this stuff, and I that I got frustrated by the way, and I probably like stepped back from it for about a week or two. But then, well, it is abstract, right? Because the way that we think about the way that money in a digital ledger works now, you can always go back and you can change a ledger. You can adjust a ledger. If Chase messes up your your refund, you just call Chase and they can fix it, right? But when it's when it's something's locked into a blockchain, it's locked in. Yeah. So so the the word chain kind of like you know, means that things are linked together. But then I was thinking like blocks. So there's blocks and stuff. So I started to like look at it, but it, but it was still very, very confusing. But I started to learn bits and pieces of things that kind of like made me take interest in it to learn more. Like for instance, um, I understood the problem with a centralized environment is that there right. was like one governing body that was making a lot of decisions. And if that governing body, you know, collapsed, everybody collapsed. And uh, there was no, there weren't too many eyes on things, you know? And then I would hear that in the blockchain, you know, it wasn't like that. It was like a peer to peer environment where, you know, things were a little bit more in control, out, out of control of one entity. So I would hear something like that and I go, oh, okay, centralized versus decentralized. But I'm still thinking like, well, but where is it? You know, is it in this microphone? Is it, <laughs> is it in my computer? Like, do I have to like be Neo and like know how to code to do it? So that was that was the part of it that I didn't understand. So as I started to dive deeper into this, and then I, I heard the correlation between the fact that this blockchain is actually touted as being this predicted web 3.0. So now we, we went through a little bit of history from web 1.0, 2.0, and then 3.0. But what's interesting is web 3.0 is still in the back to the pioneer movement that we're all involved in. Web 3.0 is still kind of being crafted right now. So what that means is this. I remember I dated myself and I told you there was no internet in college. I remember the first time that the internet was mentioned. And I remember the same exact feeling. I remember I heard the word internet and it made no sense at all. And now in 2022, my entire life revolves around it. As a matter of fact, there are unconscious habits in my life that are taking place on the internet. So once I grasped that and I said, okay, so this is the new internet. So it's normal to feel the way I feel. That's when I that's when I started to just like calm down and start reading and learning. And what I learned is that this blockchain, which kind of is a place, 
it's kind of a place like the internet. And if you say, what does he mean by place? Say, well, is the internet is kind of like this thing. I don't know where it lives. It kind of communicates through ether. So it's like that, but it's a different environment. It's a different. Well, it's like, it's, it's a digital ledger, right? It's, 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 you know, historically, you know, for us, for us old schoolers, when you're, when you're doing your accounting, you put every transaction in your business on a ledger, right? But now, you know, if I mess up on my ledger, I can go back and I can erase a number here and fix a number there. But once something is locked into that chain, it's, it's, it's not possible to do that. You know, I actually heard a great example on, uh, from NFTs for newbies where Heather, Heather explains this, what I thought was really good. Imagine that you have, you have a you know, little old lady who has this, this shop and she just writes down every transaction that takes place in her shop and you can only spend her currency in her shop, which I thought was a pretty good analogy. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not perfect, but I think that's an interesting way to think about it. You know, in, in, in the fact that it's decentralized, I think is really important too, because the, one of the biggest problems that we have nowadays is currency manipulation and, and, and things of that nature, which is interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I think what, it, what I like the most about this, this place called the blockchain is that it's safer. You know, here's what I like to do with my money. You know, you know, you know, that old adage of like stuffing money under the mattress. The reason yeah. why you would hypothetically do that is because you don't want anyone messing with it. Right. But the reason why you take your money outside and outside out of the mattress is because you're hoping to make money from your money and put it in this. But what just happened, you know, in 2008 and all, I mean, people now realize that your money's not that safe in a bank or at least not as safe as you used to think. So what I love about this, this place where we're going to start transacting and doing and doing business, which by the way, is where NFTs live. We just did an episode on that and where you're transacting, transacting with NFTs with currency that we call cryptocurrency, right? Now, cryptocurrency is, is, is a tradable asset as well, just kind of like, you know, in the stock market, but cryptocurrency lives in the, in the blockchain and so do NFTs. So this safe world, this decentralized world that nobody has a say in it, because like Mark said, it's locked in, Right. That's where all this business is taking place. So one thing that I started, it is dragon. I, I, I just want to interject something here that, you know, if you're listening to this right now, you're in the 1% of human beings on the planet that's motivated to learning this because dragon is, is absolutely hundred percent correct. It's much safer if you know how to use it, because if you don't know how to use it, you can get scammed massively. Hey, what's up? Mark here. Just want to take you on a quick break with a resource I think is really going to help you. Some of the concepts that we're covering in the show sound really complicated and really technical. But listen, you don't need to code. You don't need to get a master's degree in computer science. All you need to do is have the right resources. We're going to make it simple. We're going to make it easy. I've got a link below. Go to www.nftsmadesimple.com. That's nftsmadesimple.com. You're going to get a free cheat sheet there. It's 100% free. What are you waiting for? Go get the cheat sheet. It's going. We're going to break down some of the key definitions in the ways that are really practical and really simple. Go to nftsmadesimple.com right now to get your free cheat sheet. That's nftsmadesimple.com. All right, let's get back into the show. There was a guy recently who clicked the wrong link on the wrong site and a two, $2 million worth of NFTs were stolen. Yeah. So it's, it's again, I, I think that that, you know, Dragon, if, if, if I had one goal for this show, it would be to, to teach people how to, interact in this new world safely. Yeah. It's a, you it's, know, it's a safe new world, but you have to know how to interact with it. And that's what, that's what we're going to do. But the, but the concept of it, 100%. what's exciting about it, because keep, keep in mind, Mark and I, I don't own an NFT right now and I'm making my own NFT, but remember I haven't minted it. So it's not an NFT yet. So I just want you guys to know that we are on this journey ahead of you a little bit, maybe behind you, because there's probably a lot of experts listening too, just to make sure we know what we're talking about. But why I'm going after this and why we're encouraging people to learn about it is that it is the next thing. It's, it's the next place where human beings are going to transact. And the potential of it, because the, the, it's decentralized, is enormous. Now, I will say that there's another side of it. Now, because we're not selling anything here, we can talk transparently about 
the way it looks to us. The, on the other side of it is, here's what I'm thinking. Because you, if, you, if you follow TikTok and all these things, you hear about all these kids making all this money and, you know, selling NFTs for hundreds of thousands of dollars and all that stuff. So one of the things that I'm thinking is, is if all these people are making all this money, what is the future value of money? That's on my mind. Like, what does that mean? If everybody has money, does that mean that money doesn't mean anything anymore? And also, I mean, I don't know if I'm just scarred from the last 50 years, but I got to assume, and this is why I'm not rushing into this. I got to assume that uncle Sam's going to try to put their hands in this at some time. You know, oh, yeah. uncle Sam does not let everybody just buy Lamborghinis and yachts and fly around the world. Uncle Sam is going to come take a little piece of that at some point. So one of the things that I want everybody to know, and we'll, we'll reiterate this is that's one of the reasons why Mark and I are taking this journey the way we are is we want to do this in a smart way. We want to create a smart contract <laughs> with each other to go about this process of learning about things like the blockchain the right way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, the government regulation, the government historically has always found a way to regulate. And right now, they don't really know. There's a lot of governments that are trying to figure out how to regulate it. I think it's, gosh, I can't remember which country, but you know, there's countries that are even making these cryptocurrencies and the blockchains like their central form of doing business but i think at the end of the day when it comes to a blockchain there's there's three fund fund to fund to fundamental core concepts the first of which is it's decentralized right which we talked about the second of which is it's public so that that little tiktok millionaire you can go and you can make sure that they're legit by looking at their public wallet because it's public what happens is, is public and it's also trustless, right? Because again, you don't have to trust an essential agency. You trust in the blockchain, right? But before we move on to the next episode, which is going to be more about cryptocurrencies in general, which I think is really important. And then we can start work. Listen, we're getting really close to the fun stuff, which is the, you know, how you can actually make money, transact, do things on the, on the blockchain and with NFTs. Another core concept with blockchains is there's multiple blockchains. There's not just one. There's multiple and you always, you, you know, every blockchain has its own currency and you can do different things on different blockchains. The most popular blockchain would be the Bitcoin blockchain. Everyone knows about that. But when it comes to NFTs, the main player in the game is the Ethereum blockchain. Right. Right. It's the Ethereum blockchain. So Dragon, why do you think the Ethereum blockchain is, is, is really important to NFTs right now? Well, two things there, just, just from my knowledge, um, I think Ethereum is such a big name right now because it was the first big dog on the on the block. I, I don't think that you could buy an NFT unless you had Ethereum. But as you know, there's new currencies stepping into their own NFT projects like Solana and stuff like that. So, which is a blockchain. Solana is a blockchain, also, right? Right, but but before that happened. NFTs were only, I'm pretty sure, the only way you could acquire an NFT was to have currency through this Ethereum blockchain. So here's, here's something that's really important for everybody to understand. Once again, this is all brand new. This is this new frontier, just like I gave the analogy of the internet. So there's multiple blockchains, as Mark said, but the experts are all predicting right now. And this is what's interesting is, you're seeing a massive surge of this because it's new and exciting, but all the, all the experts say you're going to see a big decline in it. And after the decline, the people that survive the blockchains or whoever is, is there for real, those are going to be the big wins, right? So that's why yeah. we're taking our time. But yeah. the experts are predicting, Mark, that eventually there might be separate blockchains like it, but it might show up as different browsers like Chrome versus Firefox versus Safari, meaning they'll all be interchangeable on the same blockchain. There'll be an overcast, and this is just, just what I've been reading. There'll be well, maybe overall, we don't we don't know for sure how that looks yet, right? That but that that makes sense. That is me. that would and and honestly, if that happens, Dragon, that makes block. I mean, that makes your NFT super exciting because not only do they live on the exactly. Ethereum blockchain, Why but I could transfer it to it? the Solana or the ABC or whatever's next. Why wouldn't they do it? Right. And, and once again, keyword Mark said, maybe, right. We're, we're maybe people, right. We're, ver, we're, we're entrepreneurs and, and we're, we're risk takers, but in this realm right now, we're curious cats 
and and we're we're fact checkers, you know. And that's one of the things I love about Mark is if I if I get a dragon will get all hopped up and excited about something, and Mark will like read the facts about it. And so that's what you're going to get in this podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So some really important stuff that we've covered. Again, we're going to have links below. And again, listen, we're giving you all sorts of weird definitions and weird ver verbology and vernacular that you may have not heard before. We've got links below to our resources. And we also have a link to a cheat sheet, a great cheat sheet that's going to help you make sense of this. You're going to see all these definitions in writing. I think it's going to be a great head start for you. So you don't have to go around to all these different websites. We're going to get that all connected for you. So listen, we've kind of given you a 3000 foot overview of what a blockchain is, why it's important, why it's a core concept. Let's talk about cryptocurrency. Let's move on to the next episode. Where we're going to talk about crypto. I'm psyched.